While connected to the Ethereum mainnet, I managed to send myself funds over the Polygon testnet without ever directly signing a transaction. Curious to see how I did it? Stick around, because today on Eat the Blocks, I'm going to show you how to integrate Web3 into your backend. For this walkthrough, you'll need Postman and my Express boilerplate. Once you have those installed, I'll talk you through how to set up a multi-chain backend using this repository after a word from our sponsor. Hey, this is Julian, just popping up here for a second. We have a very special Black Friday offer running now. Click the link in the description. This is a limited time offer to become a blockchain developer in 2023. First, let's try to understand what makes something Web3 enabled. Using MetaMask as an example, it enables Web3 support on browsers by providing a safe way to store your wallet keys and connecting you to a node provider. It also translates your input into something usable so that you can interact with smart contracts on the blockchain. In short, we need three basic things for our backend, an RPC endpoint, a translator, and a wallet key. I've already supplied you with free node providers in this handy JSON file, so that handles our first shopping list item. To immediately knock out the next requirement, let's make use of the Ethers JS package. In order to address the last, let's use Ethers to create a brand new wallet if no wallet is detected. Luckily for you, I've already done that under utils evmjs. In the wallet key function at the top, it looks for a wallet config JSON file and creates a brand new wallet with ethers if it's not available. Moving down, I also make it easy to extract node providers in the provider function and additionally give you a method for adding your wallet key to make a signer object. Right now, all the app does is spit out the address of its current wallet and the available networks if you send a GET request to its base endpoint. However, it's a machine that seemingly does nothing we can provide some functionality by making it return the balance of the generated wallet as well. To do so, let's create a function for getting the balance of our wallet and then make a balance endpoint that accepts the name of a network as a parameter. A successful call to this endpoint will result in a report of how much gas the server has on this network. To demonstrate that this works, let's send some Mumbai Matic and call it again. Now that we've successfully funded our wallet, we need to withdraw from it, so let's use the same base endpoint to handle post requests. It'll use the same parameter as before, but it also takes a body as an argument. For this, we'll need a funding destination and amount. After translating the value, it will generate a new signer based on our preferred network, and then send the requested amount. To check that this worked, let's get our balance again with the GET request. This was an incredibly basic introduction to Web3-enabled backends. Are you interested in my advanced boilerplate? Let us know in the comment section below for a full tutorial, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it.